Hi everyone, it's Rob from New Zealand Post here. Today we're going to be talking about automation in eShip. This video is going to have two parts. In the first part of the video, we'll look at automating parcel selection and service selection. I'll show you all the features we have available. In the second part, we'll have a real-world example that we'll go through together. Let's begin. As you can see in my list of orders here, all of the services have already been selected for these orders. These are fresh imports, but they are already ready to be printed. Let's look at how I achieved that. First things first, let's have a look at automating the selection of package sizes. Go to Settings, then go to Package Setup. As you can see in my example, I've got two box sizes that I use, a small box and a big box. The differences between them is that the small box is 10 by 10 by 10 and typically weighs 1 kgs, and a big box is 30 by 30 by 30 and weighs 5 kgs. You can see here we have an option at the top, automatically calculate the package weight from order items. What this does is, when we import an order, either from a CSV file or an integration, eShip will automatically calculate the total box weight by using the contents of the order from your system. Then it will apply that weight as the package weight for your box. This value is also quite useful because we can use this to automate box selection. Let's see how. Let's have a look at the small box. You can see it has the name, small box, its dimensions as before, and a default weight. But there's another feature here that we can take advantage of minimum kgs and maximum kgs. By specifying a kg range, we can have this box automatically selected if a total order weight falls between the two values. For example, I might have a minimum weight of 1 kgs and a maximum weight of 5 kgs for my small box. Then for my big box, let's have it suit all the other dimensions. As you can see, I've done this already. 5.1 kgs up to 25 kgs, and this box will be selected automatically. Now let's look at automating service selection. For the courier post carrier, we have an option that allows us to specify default services for the North and South Islands. This is usually enough for most people's needs. Let's have a look at this. Go to carriers, then choose Career Post, Settings, and near the bottom you can choose your default services. For businesses that only use trackbacks, you can simply select the appropriate trackback service for both. For example, A4 Trackpack. Now all of my domestic parcels will automatically be in A4 Career Post trackpacks. Nice and easy. For businesses that tend to deliver parcels more often, a good selection is having the same island be the online parcel service, so overnight, which is the only option for same island deliveries. And for the other island, choose the economy service. This allows us to get the best pricing, as long as speed is not required. Finally, businesses that use parcels more often, but need everything to be urgent, should be using online parcel for both. I'm going to go for the standard. This is a good start, but it doesn't give us control over international or pace deliveries. It's also not very precise. For example, what would we do if sometimes we use track packs as well? That's when we look at the rules feature. First, let's create a new rule, and I'll show you all the available options. Rules are run when orders are imported. Each rule has a condition and an action. The condition checks against each order as it's imported to see whether it should be run or not. The available conditions are all orders, so this rule will run for every single order, no matter what. The condition can be country name. For example, you could choose country and then have an action run based on that country. Country code runs on a similar basis. 
you can have a rule that is applied based on a specific postcode range in either New Zealand or Australia. You can have a rule run against the total order value of that shipment. You can have a rule run against items above, below, or at certain weights. And finally, you can have a rule run against any order that has a matching shipping method or shipping description. Shipping method is the one primarily used by e-commerce platforms as a way of describing the name of the shipping service at the cart. Shipping description is similar, but not all e-commerce platforms offer this as an option. Shipping method is the one we use primarily. Now let's look at what actions we can apply. First of all, we can assign an order to another account. This is useful if you're using child accounts and you want to reallocate an order to another part of the business. Second, you can choose to import the order at all. In some cases, you might not want to import an order. Say, for example, you're importing from your CMS and the order in question is a cash sale that's already been picked up by the customer. There's no reason to import that kind of order into eShip because we do not need to print a label for it. Authority Delive has been deprecated, so should not be used. Set Carrier and Service Code, this is the big one. This allows us to choose the carrier, Courier Post, New Zealand Post or Pace, and then an appropriate service. The service list is shown as codes rather than service names, but there is a page on the support pages where you can find what all these codes mean. Set carrier with no fastware services is also deprecated. Set order value allows you to change the value of an order. This is helpful if you're, say, running a special and you want to reduce all of those orders to a certain price, or if you need to adjust the price for some other reason. You can choose the set signature required. This one's quite straightforward. If an order matches your condition, you can set the signature required setting to true or false. Finally, you can split packages. This is an interesting one. By default, eShip will pack all items in an order into one parcel, but this not, might not be what you want. Using these rules, you can split packages by either the order item quantity. So for example, if my order contains five items, eShip will assume that five labels are required. Alternatively, you can split packages by order weight. Specify how large a parcel can be in kgs, say for example 10, and for every 10 kgs in that order, one label will be generated. Cool. Now that we've reviewed all of the options available, let's try a real world example. Here I have a spreadsheet of orders that I'm going to import into eShip. So here are my business rules. International items using the express shipping method should be shipped using an appropriate New Zealand post service. Items being shipped within New Zealand should use either the overnight parcel service or the economy service based on which island it's going to. Any orders with free shipping should go in an A4 track pack. Finally, I might want some high value orders, for example, this one in the middle, which is receiving 15 of this item at $5 each, should automatically have signature required to ensure maximum safety for this expensive order. Now, let's go into eShip and set this up. Because we've already gone to our carrier settings, as before, and set up our default services for domestic deliveries, all we need to do now is create some rules. First, let's do the international rule. Click Add New Rule. Select the condition. So in this case, we're going based on the shipping method. We're going to choose Contains, and then write the word Express. Then, we're going to choose Set carrier and service code. 
New Zealand Post is going to be the carrier. And we're going to use the standard international service. If you ever need to check what this service has been, you can go to support, scroll down, and find the NZ Post or Courier Post service codes lists. You can see in my case, TILP is an air parcel. This rule is ready to go. Hit save changes. Next, we need to manage my free shipping items that go in track packs. This one is going to be the same thing. Add a new rule. Condition will be shipping method. Contains free shipping. And then the action is going to be set carrier and service code, courier post, and the A4 track pack service. Finally, for my high value items, we're going to apply signature required. Add a new rule, select condition, choose order value. In this case, we're going to want greater than and I'm going to input 49. Something to bear in mind when using greater thans is we're looking for any value higher than this. So in my case, any items $50 or higher will be applied. And then finally, set signature required, and the value is going to be true. Done. Now I can import my orders. Using the CSV import feature can be a good way to test that your rules are all working without needing to create orders manually in your own system. Let's have a look at what's happened here. As we can see, the two international orders have been assigned the correct service. My inter-island order has ended up in the economy, CPOLE. My same island order has had the correct service applied, the overnight parcel. And finally, my free shipping order has had the track pack service assigned. We can also check the high value order, which is this middle one, and confirm that signature required has been ticked for us. As you can see, the total value of this order ended up being $75. You'll also note that because of its high weight, it's been assigned the big box instead of the small box. By setting up these rules for automation, we no longer need to actually edit each individual order. As long as the addresses are correct, we can basically print them out immediately using either the bulk print feature by ticking the items we want and going to print, or by using the quick print feature. By doing this, we save the maximum amount of time per order and maximize our efficiency. Any business with an integration in eShip should be using at least one of these features, if not all of them. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for watching.